Hello there, in this video I'm going to show my settings for rendering uh, using Marmoset Toolback. So I've been getting a lot of people requesting advice and feedback on how exactly I do my renders, uh, both for Substance Designer materials and just for models. So I'm going to show you my usual settings that I use for rendering. So here in this video I'm going to be using this model. Uh, this model was sent to me by Yusuke Ninja. So he has an art station where he posted this model and I contacted him because I really like the model and I wanted to use it as for this tutorial. So there's a link in the description if you want to go see his art station profile. He has some really good stuff there. So I'm going to be using this model and I'm going to show exactly what I usually do for my renders. So let's go ahead and start with the empty, with the new scene. And by the way, I'm using Marmoset Toolback 3.05, which is, I think, the latest. So first things first, what I do is I go to File and Import My Model. So here's the model. And for this particular model, I have it separated into different pieces. So different materials for different pieces. So there's a total of uh, five different materials. So the first thing you want to do in uh, Marmoset Toolback, Toolback is uh, create your materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the ones that came with uh, my importer. When I import, uh, Marmoset Toolback also imports the materials that I made, that I assigned in Maya, but I don't need those. So what I like to use is usually I go here under various presets for materials. And I like to use the Unreal 4 preset and double click on it. I'm just going to name this one uh, the head. And I'm going to apply it to the head. So to do that, you have to go here under your model. And if your model is in different pieces, just click on the piece. And then just drag the material over that or over the uh, head here. And that applies the material. So next, what I do is I import my texture. So first, here is the normal map. And I always like to uh, get close here to make sure that the material actually imported correctly. And for normal maps, what I do is I do a flip Y because I'm exporting uh, using the... Um, although it's kind of hard to see with this material. But yeah, I think I, have, I usually uh, click flip Y because I'm exporting from uh, Substance Painter for Unreal materials. Although I'm going I'm to have to double check here because I'm using the Unreal preset material. So I may have to just uncheck that. But it's kind of hard to tell right now because we're not seeing any texture here. So next is the roughness map. And then the albedo, and then the metallic. And then if you have an ambient occlusion as part of this, what I do is under ambient occlusion, I add occlusion and then click on that. I don't think I have one here. So in my case, I'm just going to set, set it to none. Okay, so we have that. And actually I'm going to also change the diffusion from Lambarian to uh, microfiber. And there's a reason for that, but I'm gonna show you the settings for that later. So once I have that material set up, uh, all I have to do is just duplicate it. So click here, duplicate it, and then rename that one. So this one's gonna be my hair. I'm going to click on my hair here and then just drag that in. And then for that one, I uh, have to change my materials, of course. And then I'm going to pretty much do the same thing here. Uh, I'm going to speed up this process uh, because obviously I already showed how to do that. So I'll just do it for the rest of the pieces.
Okay, so now I have all my materials ready and set up. So let me get close here. Just want to make sure that my normal map is correct. But again, as I said, I think with this character, it's just a little bit hard to tell if I needed to flip my normals or not. I think I did. Let's see. Yeah, I needed to enable flip Y for my normal map. I'm just going to make sure that's set up for all the pieces. So, okay, so now we have our materials ready and they are applied to our model. So now essentially it's time to set up our lighting so that our render looks good. So what I do, first I typically I choose one of the sky uh, presets here. So I'm going to click on the preset. And essentially, I just go through these and then find one that looks good. Also, well, while I'm doing this, also I want to change my uh, background. I don't want it to be uh, the actual environment, but I just want it to be a color. And typically, I like to set that to a semi-dark color. Obviously, you can play with that. Um, I've seen pretty good renders with lighter colors as well, but I personally, I prefer the darker and with a little bit of color as well. And one uh, one suggestion I have is to also choose, if you're gonna have a background that has color, make sure it's, uh, it has a good contrast with the actual subject that you have here. So, a contrast for the reds here will be like a bluish, but then you also have blue here, so which is why I kind of setting it up slightly neutral but dark. So there's that. So let's continue looking at the presets. And the one that I actually liked a lot uh, when I was uh, testing was this one I believe or was it this one no it was the museum one so I really like that one so I'm going to choose that and I'm also going to add a light to it and to do that what you do is here under the image you just click on it and then just drag that out and as you can see you can move that and essentially that is a light that you have added to the scene. I'm going to rotate this a little bit just to see what I'm getting. Typically what I like to get is I like to have like a rim light that separates the character from the background. And I don't necessarily need it to be around the entire thing, but usually just from one side. So something like this, where you can see there's a rim light here. But then obviously everything else looks dark. Um, so to compensate for that, sometimes what I do is I go here under settings, so click here on the uh, settings. And Actually, no, that's not it. It's under the main camera. And here you can increase the exposure for your render. So obviously you don't want it to blow out the, uh, the colors too much because then it just looks blown out. And I like to reduce the contrast center just slightly. And one thing that you can do also is give it a color as well. As you can see, it's slightly giving it just a little bit of color. Oh, one thing too is under tone mapping. I like to set that from linear to this one, which is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's just uh, just a bunch of letters. Anyway, 
So after that, obviously my image becomes darker, but then if I increase my exposure, it doesn't completely blow it out. So maybe that looks good. Okay, so now under sharpen, usually I just give it a little bit, just so that it's not too soft. But obviously, if you do it too much, it just it just looks bad. So I just give it a tiny bit. And then bloom, uh, I set that just a little bit. Just give it a little bit of bloom. Obviously, you don't want it to be like this, where it's just way too much. And also one thing is you can change the size of the bloom. It's going to set that really low. Especially for this character, it's not really needed too much. Uh, vignette, I really like to increase that a lot. And set the soft almost to the max. And I also like to change the color. Looking at this, I may want to go back to my sky and change the background and make it even darker. And it might be it might be just a little bit too contrasty, but I think I don't know. I like it. Obviously, play with it as you wish. And then the grain, I just leave it as is. Okay, so, uh, as you can see right now, there's like an outline on my character, so that is controlled by the, uh, remember when the, I made the material and then I set the uh, diffusion to microfiber. So essentially that gives us like a highlight around our character, and right now it was set to the max, so you, you could see the entire um, highlight for it. Usually what I like to do here is change the color to something that works better with the character. And in this case, I think it's like a blue kind of color works good. And I don't necessarily like it all the way to the max just because it doesn't look that great. So I just increase it just a tiny bit, but try not to overdo it. Then obviously you will have to do that for all of these. I would set the material correctly. Probably should have done that before I duplicated the materials. It's just a nice to. Um, it's nice because it gives the highlight to the character. Okay, so I mean this is already looking pretty good as a render, I think. And I'm rotating the light, obviously depending on how much you rotate it and what you're looking at here. Sometimes it kind of looks blown out. But because this is a static render, it doesn't really matter. Let me go back to the sky. Let's see here. Probably move the light that we created. Or something like that. 
let's create another one. You don't usually want to overdo this because it's just like it's just not necessary to add too many lights. In this case, I don't think I needed to add another one. It's not really doing much. But sometimes what you can do is, as you can see here under the sky, here are the lights. And here you can always change the, uh, the settings, for example. You can change the color. So that's that. So essentially at this point, I would say we are ready to render. Um, so I think I like these posts right here. That looks good. And what we want to do when we're ready to render is go to a render settings. And here, usually it's a good idea to enable a global illumination for both diffuse and spec. Um, but sometimes it really depends on the model. So in this case, this is what I get when I do that. Uh, we want to probably increase the, the brightness of it a little bit. So there's that and there's this. You know, I guess it depends on if you think it looks good or not. In this case, I think it might not look that great. Although I would try to increase the occlusion to the max and by the way you want to do this when you're ready to render the final image or turntable just because it usually like starts to slow down uh, marmoset so there's that uh, and set this to the highest And I usually just kind of look at what uh, these settings are, what these uh, things are doing. So I like that. Uh, so next, we want to make sure the ambient occlusion is on. Actually, let me turn these guys off first. And then turn ambient occlusion first, just to see what that's doing. And I like to increase the intensity, depending on what it is that you're rendering. I like to increase it quite a bit to like three or so. And here you can also change the size. So essentially how close uh, the ambient occlusion is to the contact spots, like here. So here's without ambient occlusion and here's with ambient occlusion. It's a lot better. Okay, so that's that, and as I said, you know, turn your GI. I don't know, in this case it almost looks better without it, in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. And so I think that's pretty much it for settings, and then once you're ready, what you want to do to render it, you're going to go to Edit, and under Preferences, you want to set your output location, so where your render goes. So you might set correctly. Okay, and then click OK. And then on the capture, you want to go to settings. And here, you can choose whatever format you want. Uh, you can also choose if you want it to be separated from the background. And I think the 1920 by 1080 is fine, but you can always, you know, increase the size. And you always want to increase the sampling to either 100 or 400. So that takes a long, longer to render, but uh, it gives you a nicer, cleaner render. So yeah, that's usually what I do. I set that to 400 when I'm really ready to uh, bake the final. Click OK, and then once you're ready, either click on Image to render 
or image and open and that's going to render it and show you the image that is rendered. So that's for rendering images. Uh, some people have been asking about my turntables because that's usually how I present my models in YouTube. Um, so how I do that is I select my character, go to scene, add object, and click on turntable. And that essentially puts your model inside a turntable, which you can then hit play and start playing your turntable essentially. Also, you can change the speed here. So by default set to one, but if you think it's too fast or too slow, you can always increase that. So typically I don't um, render out my turntables for YouTube. And the reason for that is because it usually takes a long time to do that. Uh, but if you want to do that, I believe under video, but then under your capture settings, uh, the same place where you change the image settings, you want to change your render sampling to about 400 as well. And as I said before, that takes a while to render. So which is kind of why I usually don't render that because it just takes a long time in my computer. And you can also set the quality here and the video format as well. And then once you're done with that, you can click uh, video and that's going to bake your turntable. But I'm not going to do that right now because uh, it's going to take a while. So what I do personally for my YouTube is I press the space bar and go full screen mode while I'm playing the, uh, the turntable. And this is usually what I present in my YouTube videos just because it's a lot faster and I can just screen grab uh, what's happening here. Obviously the resolution is not that great. So if this was for a portfolio piece, for example, uh, you would want to actually render it out because that's going to give you uh, a way nicer resolution than this uh, because if you're just recording it in the viewport as I do uh, this is the maximum quality that you get which is usually a little bit pixelated and stuff but yeah that's usually what I do and uh, in my editing software I kind of sometimes I block uh, this uh, part here because I don't think you can hide uh, these parts of the UI so that's what I do. So yeah, that's pretty much, I think I covered everything I usually do for my renders. Uh, so yeah, I think this looks pretty good. And I do the same thing for my Substance Designer. I So what I do is essentially, and what I recommend doing is, once you have a render that looks pretty good and you have all your settings set correctly the way you like them, uh, just save your thing as a template somewhere and then just name a template and every time you want to render something new all you have to do is import a new model and apply a new material actually you could just use one of the existing materials and use that as your rendering template that's what i do for my youtube videos too i just have one rendering template that i use uh, which is why all my renders look almost the same uh but yeah that's what i do and uh yeah, I think that covers everything. So I hope this video was useful. Uh, again, if you want to check out this model and uh, the person who made it is Yusuke Ninja. He has an art station. He has some pretty awesome uh, sculpts there. So thank you very much to him for uh, letting me use his model. And yeah, and yeah, if, I hope this is useful. And if you have any questions, you also leave them in the uh, comment section below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Did you like the finished model? Do you want to learn how I made the stylized material I always use in all my models? Check the link in the description below to learn how to make it from scratch with my step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make a stylized material within Substance Painter.